All right, um, well, we'll get started. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining me this morning to talk about um, the North River Restoration Grant Opportunity that's um, coming. Uh, that's utilizing funds from the Natural Resource Damages Settlement with um, the Commonwealth and Barnhart Manufacturing Company and North River LLC. Um, the uh, settlement funds are coming from the 2019 asset spill into the North River. Um, my name is Michelle Craddock, and I am MassDP's Natural Resource Damages Program Coordinator, and I'll be giving the presentation today. Um, I think we also have someone from our contracting staff joining to help me answer any questions you have at the end. Um, I have about 25 slides that I'll talk through, and I'll plan to talk for about you know, 25 minutes. Um, and then the rest of the time for the hour um, is for um, questions and answers, conversation, um, whatever um, questions come up. So the kind of overview of what I'm going to talk about, I'll start out a little bit with kind of what the purpose of this meeting is, talk a little bit about what the natural resource damages program is, um, including trust resources and the authorities that we operate under. Uh, I'll then talk about um, the settlement funds that we received and the restoration process for those. I'll then talk through kind of the application process, including eligibility for applicants um, and the geographic focus area that inter interested in. And then I'll talk through kind of the grant application, including the timeline, um, some tips and requirements, the process for how we select applications and then how we review them, including walking through our eligibility and evaluation criteria. I'll then wrap up by talking about kind of the grant award process and how that works from the Commonwealth. And then, as I said before, we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers um, and to talk about any potential projects that um, people have. So um, as I said, you know, the purpose of this meeting is really to give you a little bit of background on the natural resource damages um, settlement and program and to tell you about the upcoming um, grant opportunity and the process for that. Um, as I said, there'll be plenty of time at the end for questions. If you have any as I walk through the presentation, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat box um, and we'll get to them at the end. This webinar is being recorded and I'll post it along with the PowerPoint on MassDEP's NRD website. There'll be a link for that later on. Um, and kind of something to note is that we're estimating that the release date for the grant opportunity will be on October 1st. Um, and once that re is released, um, we're kind of limited in the conversations and questions that we can answer. So, you know, if you have questions or want to talk through potential projects and applications, it's best to do that either today um, after my presentation or to give me a call sometime before October 1st to talk through that. Um, so just a little background on natural resource damages and the program that I manage at MassDEP. Um, when there's an oil spill or release of another kind of hazardous material, um, there's the cleanup that occurs, and then there's also natural resource damage assessment and restoration that occurs. Um, so people are pretty familiar with what happens with it during a cleanup. You know, we're really assessing contamination, trying to control the source of that contamination, um, and then reducing risk to human health in the environment through a cleanup or remediation process. Natural resource damage assessment and restoration is a separate process that happens kind of at the same time or after the cleanups occurred. It's really focused on excess, uh, assessing the extent and duration of injuries to natural resources, uh, collecting monetary damages from the responsible party to compensate for those injuries, and then implementing or funding restoration projects um, that restore the resources and compensate the public for those losses. And so natural resource settlement funds are really intended to compensate the public above and beyond what's required by the cleanup. Um, and those natural resource damages funds cannot be used to fund required cleanup activities. So when we're talking about you know, natural resource, natural resource injury damages, um, what exactly are we talking about? Um, so certain natural resources are held in trust by the public, uh, for the public by the Commonwealth. Um, this includes things like fish and wildlife, surface water, groundwater, air, soils and sediments, um, among other things. 
It also includes the services that those natural resources provide. So things like fishing, hunting, and shell fishing, habitat for wildlife, recreational use, spiritual and cultural use, as well as water supply. Um, we are uh, kind of granted um, the ability to act um, as uh, trustees for natural resources by a variety of state and federal laws um, and to bring claims for natural resource damages under those laws. Um, as you can imagine, when there is um, a spill or release of oil or hazardous materials, a variety of natural resources are frequently impacted or injured. Um, so you can see in this picture, if there were, you know, say an acid spill into a stream, that could injure the, the sediment in the stream, the surface water in the stream, the fish that use the stream, and potentially the recreational use of that stream. Um, so since 1992, the Commonwealth has settled over 20 natural resource damages claims in Massachusetts. As you can see on the slide, um, it, the settlement amount varies a lot based on kind of the size of the site, the duration of the injury, things like that. So, you know, we've had settlements all the way up to $20 million for uh, the New Bedford Harbor Superfund site. And then we have um, some smaller settlements for more discrete and smaller kind of oil spills or contaminant spills into the environment. Um, our most recent settlement associated with the coal rain acid spill in 2019, uh, we received $225,000 in settlement funds to be used towards natural resource damages restoration projects. Um, you'll also note on here that there was a um, previous spill um, in coal rain, an acid spill back in 1999, um, which we received just under $30,000 for that. And I'll talk a little bit about more of that settlement on the next slide. So the 1999 um, acid spill in coal rain, um, there was a release of sulfuric acid um, that injured the sediment, surface water, and fish. Um, and there was a settlement again of about $30,000. Um, similar injuries as to the acid spill we saw in 2019. Um, to conduct restoration associated with that, um, MassDEP issued a grant solicitation in 2017 um, and awarded those funds to the Franklin Land Trust to do a project um, called the North River Baseline Assessment um, and Large Woody Debris Demonstration Project. Um, and this project was really focused on improving access and completing permitting for um, the large woody debris demonstration projects that were in the, the North River, as well as conducting some baseline assessments um, of the West Branch and Sanders River. And so the important thing to note here is that, you know, there was a really close nexus between the injury that we saw from the acid spill um, to the North River and the restoration projects um, that worked to really improve the, the fish and wildlife habitats in the river. And that's a really important aspect of the Natural Resource Damages Program is, is that close nexus. One other example, um, kind of the natural resource injury and restoration uh, that I wanted to share with you um, is from the Blackburn and Union Superfund site in Walpole, Massachusetts. So, you know, other side of the state from coal rain. Um, but at this site, um, there was a release of hazardous substances that injured surface water, sediment, groundwater, fish, and wildlife. Um, and utilizing about $1.3 million in settlement funds, the natural resource trustees were able to fund a variety of projects, including the removal of a dam on um, Trap Hole Brook, which is a tributary, the design and permitting to upgrade two culverts to meet stream crossing standards, as well as some freshwater wetland restoration um, located in close proximity to the site. So again, this is just to kind of show you um, kind of some of the types of projects that we have funded, as well as kind of the close nexus um, in terms of uh, restoring resources that are um, associated with the injured resources, as well as doing that restoration in close proximity to where the injury occurred. Um, so to move kind of into the, the Barnhart acid spill um, and the settlement there, I, I'm sure some of you or most of you are familiar with that, um, but there was a 2021 settlement between the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and Barnhard Manufacturing Company and North River LLC 
um, to settle um, a variety of violations under um, state and federal law. Um, that settlement was for just under about $1.5 million, and there, there was a lot of different parts to that. Um, but one of those included the $225,000 for natural resource damage restoration projects. And so that's what I'm talking to you about today. Um, the Natural Resource Damage Trustee here is the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts acting through the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, um, Secretary Tepper. Um, however, the program um, has been um, is it administered by MassDEP and we're here representing on her behalf. And so um, we'll talk a little bit later about what specific types of projects we're looking for, um, but these are kind of the guidelines um, that we're using um, that were set forth in that um, consent judgment. Um, so again, we have $225,000, and that needs to be used towards restoration projects that restore, replace, and or acquire the equivalent of natural resources or natural resource services that were injured as a result of releases from that site. So, you know, I spoke about this earlier, but you know, the surface water, the cold water fisheries, um, the fish and wildlife that are using um, that injured habitat. Um, additionally, um, all the projects need to be located in the Deerfield River watershed in Colerain um, with a focus on the North River sub watershed. And on this next slide, I have a map of that. Um, the whole town of Colerain is in the Deerfield River watershed. So technically any project in Colerain um, that fits the criteria is eligible. Um, however, we do have um, a focus on the North River sub watershed, which is that kind of blue shaded um, sub watershed that you can see on the screen now, which you know also is a significant portion of the town of Colerain. Um, so now I'm going to talk about a little more of the details about, you know, who can apply, things like that. Um, so a variety of public and non-public entities are eligible to apply for this grant. Um, state and local governments, including county, municipality, local governments, government agencies, state authorities are all eligible to apply. Um, additionally, individuals, um, partnerships, and both private and nonprofit. Um, corporations are also eligible. Some things to note is that um, while there is um, a requirement that projects be located in the Deerfield or the North River subbasin watersheds, um, organizations based outside of those areas are eligible to apply as long as the proposed projects are within that eligible project area. Additionally, we really encourage you know partnerships um, and collaborative efforts between organizations um, and um, you know, state and federal government, nonprofits, um, local groups. Um, we really strongly encourage that. And additionally, um, eligible applicants can submit more than one application for distinct restoration projects. Um, while we do have $225,000, know, that could potentially go towards one project or it could go towards several projects depending on the type of projects we receive and how we evaluate them. So once these um, the materials are ready to be posted on or about October 1st, they'll be posted to MassDEP's NRD website at the link below. They'll also be posted on the Commonwealth's procurement website, which is Combi's. If you're familiar with it, there's a few kind of hints in there on how to find it um, once you go in there. Um, additionally, I did send out um, an email to a group of you about two weeks ago about this meeting and the upcoming um, funding announcement. Um, and I'll send an email to that group as well once it's available um, with links on how to find it. So um, you can find it here. I'll be sending an email. If you weren't on that initial email list, feel free to drop your email in the, um, the um, comments box and I can add you to that list if you'd like. This is kind of our estimated timeline at the moment. Um, as I've said a couple of times, we're hoping to announce it or to post it on October 1st. Um, there then would be a, about a two week period where people could submit written questions to MassDEP, um, the answers to which would be posted on our website approximately by October 23rd at the latest. Um, and, and those questions 
really have to be focused on kind of the application um, and not focused on specific projects. Um, anticipated grant application due date is November 15th at 5 p.m. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about how to submit applications. And we're anticipating that um, the announcement of the awards would be in the beginning of February with the contract start date of March 1st. And um, as you can see by all my estimateds, um, this is just our best guess. Um, none of these dates, dates are guaranteed, but we're hoping it roughly follows this. Um, so when we do issue the grant announcement and application, um, it'll have, you know, kind of several sections in it and a variety of attachments, um, which I've kind of laid out on this screen. Um, the grant announcement will really kind of talk you through um, all the procurement and grant contract information, give you instructions on how to submit it, talk about all the terms and conditions for the awards, um, and then attached to that will be the application form then have um, kind of another attachment that goes through the application requirements, the supplemental terms and conditions for any contract that's awarded, and then there'll be a conflict of interest guidance and disclosure certification that all um, people that apply will have to um, fill out. Um, the application likewise also includes about 10 different sections um, for applicants to fill out. Um, you know, there's it's a word-based document um, whose um, the forms kind of expand as you fill them. There'll be places to include all project information. Um, we have a variety of questions about the projects that we want you to fill out. There'll be spaces for to put, submit photos, um, project background, um, descriptions of the potential project, um, including you know details on how it would be designed, permitted, built, and implemented. Uh, we want you to detail the project costs as well as highlight project benefits. So now we'll talk a little bit about how we'll review the applications. Um, so we have kind of two kinds of criteria that we use. We have the eligibility criteria, which are mandatory, which we um, use to determine if a project's eligible. And then we have evaluation criteria that helps us prioritize eligible projects. And those include a couple of different kinds of criteria, um, including focus, benefit, and implementation categories. And I'll talk through what those are specifically on the following slides. Um, and that'll all be reviewed by a grant review team that'll include staff from MassDP, as well as other um, environmental agencies within the Commonwealth. So in terms of el eligibility, um, eligible projects um, must have a strong link to the natural resources and services um, that were injured by the releases. So we've talked about what those are. They need to be a tangible on the ground restoration project. Um, and that could include um, any or all of the required components of a restoration project. So things like data collection, feasibility, evaluation, design, permitting, construction, maintenance, monitoring, and community involvement. They must restore natural resources in the geographic focus area, and they must be consistent with federal, state, or local law regulations and policies. And so um, if it would be considered ineligible if um, the project were to focus on resources that were not injured from the releases from the site, um, if they restored natural resources solely outside of the geographic focus area, if it was a project that was subject to an independent prior legal obligation to perform the project, those would be considered ineligible. Um, projects must also not be a proposal to conduct a monitoring or research study that's not connected to a restoration project. So we're really focused on on the ground restoration as opposed to um, monitoring. Um, eligible projects also must not be located on a site that's so contaminated or degraded that um, a large percentage of the funding would just be going towards cleanup relative to restoration. Um, that's not to say that no funding can go towards cleanup. You know, we have funded projects, um, you know, specifically I'm thinking of, you know, some dam removals where there had to be some kind of removal or cleanup of sediment. Um, and we have funded that, um, but we just want to make sure that it's not um, the majority of the project costs. 
Um, and additionally, um, eligible projects must not, um, the funds can't be used for kind of continued operation, maintenance, or support of an existing restoration project or natural resource. So again, really focused on um, implementing new restoration projects here. So as I said before, um, it was kind of some different evaluation criteria we use. I'm not going to talk through everything here in detail, um, but uh, it's really focused on looking at the proximity to the injured resource and their relationship to the injured resources. Um, in terms of the benefits, um, you know, we're really looking for projects that maximize the level of restoration um, of the resources that were injured. Um, as well as um, projects that benefit mul multiple natural resource types. Um, so those are great things to kind of um, detail and amplify in your application. Um, some other things I just wanted to point out here, um, you know, in terms of consistency with state, regional, or local policies and plans and community goals. Um, you know, if you're proposing a project that's been highlighted or prioritized in like a, a local um, municipal uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness plan or has been um, prioritized as part of, you know, like a culvert assessment or a dam removal assessment, um, you know, that's um, something we love to see. Um, so make sure you make note of that in your application. Um, additionally, kind of in terms of implementation, some of the criteria, um, you know, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'll point out, you know, in terms of site ownership, um, if the applicant doesn't own the site, we would wanna see a letter of support commitment from the land owner. Um, you know, we're really um, interested in projects um, that, that can be implemented and are implementation oriented. Um, and additionally, something to note is that, you know, matching funds are not required um, for this grant opportunity, um, but we do definitely encourage them, um, whether that's through leveraging, you know, staff time or outside funds. Um, and one note I'll make about the natural resource damages funds is that they are considered to be settlement funds, obviously, um, but they can typically be used as match for other state and federal grants. Um, so they're pretty flexible in that regard. Um, if you're thinking about using these as part of a larger project, um, there is um, they are they can be used as match for most other grants. So um, to detail a few kind of examples of appropriate restoration projects um, for these North River restoration funds. Um, Projects that increase or improve cold water fish habitat um, would be eligible. Um, projects that improve stream connectivity through dam removal or culvert replacement. Projects that remove, uh, improve stream bed and bank conditions for resident fish, as well as the acquisition of quality habitat for fisheries and wildlife would all be um, good examples of appropriate restoration projects. And that doesn't cover everything, um, but just to give you an idea of kind of what we're, we're looking for. Um, some examples of projects that would be inappropriate for this funding opportunity, um, as I've mentioned before, projects that are otherwise required by law or permit are not eligible. So construction of mitigation wetlands, um, site cleanup or required stormwater improvements, things like that would be ineligible. Uh, additionally, projects that don't restore the same or similar natural resources would be ineligible. So um, creating recreational paths, playgrounds, community gardens, recycling programs really wouldn't be a good fit for this um, grant opportunity. So in terms of um, submitting applications, um, you would submit the application, which is uh, attachment A of the, the grant announcement. Um, you would then probably want to read through the detailed application requirements, supplemental terms and conditions, which really detail um, requirements for invoicing and compensation. Um, and then we would need you to sign that conflict of interest certification statement, which is attachment D um, to the grant announcement. So as I said before, the application deadline um, estimated as of now is 5 p.m. on Friday, November 15th. And all applications um, would be submitted via email to me uh, at michelle.l.craddock at mass.gov. 
Um, as I said before, kind of in terms of the grant awards, um, we anticipate either doing a single or multiple awards as a contract. Uh, the grant awards will have a maximum dollar amount associated with them. And the grant duration would be three years from the date of execution. Um, and then contract, contract extensions may be available based on MassDEP's discretion. Um, so, you know, another thing with the NRD funds, um, they're in a trust account, they're not tied to a fiscal year. So we do are allowed to give a little more time for, for our grant contracts, which can be helpful for, you know, some larger projects. Um, a contract would be via the Commonwealth standard contract. It would include Commonwealth terms and conditions, as well as some supplemental terms and conditions specific to this grant. Um, and then payment is via um, reimbursement. Um, so grantees would submit for a reimbursement request. There's certain documentation that's needed and detailed in those supplemental terms and conditions. Uh, and then the Commonwealth would reimburse you for all eligible expenses um, up to that maximum um, award amount. Um, so that's all I had. I wanted to give you my contact information if you don't already have it, um, as well as the contact information for Jim, who's our contract administrator. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing my screen and um, see if there's any questions. Um, or allow people to unmute and ask any questions they have. I don't see any questions in the chat. Does anyone want to unmute and ask a question? Sure, I can jump in. Great, thanks. Yeah, thanks for all that information. This is uh, <laughs> Becky Budd. I'm the Restoration Program Manager at Connecticut River Conservancy, and I'm working on a dam removal project on I think City Mountain Brook, which is a trip to the uh, East Branch of the North River. Uh -huh. um, so my question is, do you anticipate the possibility of giving a partial award? I mean, as you know, dam removals are pricey. Yep. And even if I was awarded the entire amount, it might not cover everything. So yeah. I'm just curious, like how you would prefer it to, an application to be structured? Should I just focus on a specific small portion? Should I present the whole project? And I, I wasn't quite sure how to structure it because it's- yeah, That's a good question. Um, I mean, I think you could potentially set it up um, as like, um, you want the fund, I, I, it depends what you wanna do. So I think one option, we've definitely funded projects in the past where it, you know it hasn't covered the whole thing. I, I I totally get that dam removals are expensive. Um, so you could set it up to apply for the full amount. Um, and it would go, to, you know, you go towards whatever tasks contingent on you receiving funding from some other source. And it would be helpful for you to lay out kind of what your funding strategy is for the rest if there aren't enough funds. Um, but I think you could also detail in there that like, if, you know, if those additional funds don't materialize, like um, kind of what the course of action would be. Um, so I, I don't, I mean, I'm not familiar enough with the project. I mean, has, the, has there been like um, any design or permitting work done on it? It has gone to the, the DER, you know, preliminary design yeah. program and has okay. that, that deliverable, that final report was just um, completed in, I think it was June. So, okay. So, is this like the lower reservoir dam? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, you know, I could I could break out phases and just say this funding would advance X phase of mm -hmm. design, and then lay out the plan for the rest or something like that. I I just wasn't sure if I should bookend it so that your this application would cover a specific set of design tasks. I mean, I think that would be, I mean, if that works for you, I think, you know, that's helpful. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it depends. I mean, depends on like, if you're trying to use these, you know, if you're putting these funds towards, you know, getting it through design and permitting, getting it construction ready. Um, and you still, if you want to use these funds for match for like a grant to get construction done, um, you know, I'm not super familiar with like, you know, the timing for, for match 
on those. Um, always, I a don't... Puzzle. always a puzzle, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know whether it makes sense to kind of um, try to get additional, you know, use this as match to get it through design and permitting and then save some funds, um, NRD funds for construction later on. Is that kind of what you were thinking? I don't know what I was thinking. I haven't begun yeah. to strategize properly, but I just wondered how it would, if it's possible to do either be awarded a partial of whatever I've requested or a partial of a total task, you know, fit, you know, cause it probably wouldn't get it all the way. Well, it could, it actually could get through design the, the first phase of design. So mm -hmm. I can, I can ponder it more and I don't want to hog the entire time of questions, but <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy to talk to you separately about that. I mean, I think, you know, we're pretty flexible. Um, so I think, you know, I just want to make sure, you know, if you submit something, you, you know, you have enough kind of options in there um, mm -hmm. that if we fund something and you want to kind of change course halfway through, whatever that is, um, that that's kind of documented in the, in the application. Cause if, mm -hmm. you know, we were to fund it and we were, and you wanted to do something that wasn't outlined in the application, like we, we want to have all the information or as much yep. information as possible in the application um, to kind of evaluate. And then, you know, if you were to award um, to have kind of all that in there, yeah. um, if we were, in the, if we needed to change a scope of work down the road or, or something like that. Okay. That I sounds flexible helpful. enough. <laughs> No, it sounds flexible enough. I, that's good. It's a good start. This would be the first thing that I've applied for for this project. So yeah. I'm having try. I keep, it's the first thing. So that always makes it like, I don't know yeah. which way to go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say we have, you know, other projects where we've kind of, we've, you know, sometimes we have more money and we're able to fund, like we fund all of design and permitting to get it construction ready. And then, you know, once projects are construction ready, it's much, you know, it's much easier to get funds when a project's like ready to go on the shelf for sure. Um, right. But um, so um, you know, happy to, I don't, I don't know if, those, if my answer was helpful, but <laughs> can definitely talk more, uh, you know, once you've had a chance to kind of think about um, yeah. different, different options um, Great. for that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Does anyone else have any questions? You can feel free to unmute. Hi, Michelle. My name's Eric Halloran. I'm uh, the president of the Deerfield River Watershed Chapter of Trout Unlimited. And I'm also the person who actually reported the spill. And wow. um, and I'm sitting here. This is, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> this is the North River main stem uh, below the Barnhart factory. And, yep. um, and so I, I <laughs> the fish in this area were directly affected. Yeah. Yep. Um, we're thinking, you know, we're, it's very preliminary at this point, but we we have we also and and I, and I'd love to talk to Becky at some point about the dam that she has in mind, so we we should connect on that. But um, uh, we have a dam in mind, and and that's the one that uh, it, actually uh, you the Barnhart plant has been using uh, for their operation, and you know that's going to be an extensive project. So we're wondering whether uh, some of the preliminary work, very similar to what Becky's saying, m might possibly be covered uh, if we applied for some of these monies. And specifically what we were thinking of was the uh, testing, doing a survey of the sediment that's backed up by that dam. Mm -hmm. So at this point, everything's very preliminary, yeah. but um, but that's, what w that's the kind of an idea. And we just wanted to know whether uh, we could, you know, if it makes sense to put together an application that would, uh, target that kind of a survey. Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I think, um, you know, that would kind of go into, you know, I know, I know that's, that's a big dam. I think it's been on people's list for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're definitely open to funding kind of like feasibility stage investigations um, that will, you know, hopefully lead towards restoration down the road. Um, I know it can be can be kind of challenging to get 
you know, funding to do those really initial steps to determine if a dam removal can even move forward. So that's kind of a, a place that NRD funds have, have gone in the past for other dam removals and projects like that. So yeah, I think we definitely would be um, open to that. Um, I, I think that would be eligible. Um, I think, you know, we would want to see, I mean, that is that dam owned by, that's owned by That Barnhart. dam's owned by Barnhart right now. They're trying yeah. to sell the, I'm not sure if that's part of what they're trying to sell. I'm sure yeah. it is actually, but I yeah. don't know that I can't, yeah. I couldn't commit to that. Yeah. I mean, it would be helpful to have, I mean, I don't know if it's feasible to have some kind of like letter, you know, we'd want to see a letter of support from Barnhart or whoever owns it. Um, you know, that there was some possibility that there was interest in removing that dam. I mean, I know, I think in the past there was a lot of interest and I think it got rebuilt or something. Um, so we'd want to see, we'd want to see some level of support from the dam owner um, if yeah. we were going to fund something there. Actually, one of our members, uh, Paul Bullio, uh, worked with Ty and Bond and they, uh, Barnhart hired them to uh, investigate other sources of water for the work that they were doing at that, fa at that plant. And um, and so he will be a real asset to us as we try to move forward on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's a member of uh, Trout Unlimited. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, gl glad you could join the meeting today and glad you were sitting by the river that day. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks a lot. And, uh, th and, and you know, DP uh, took action and, and uh, I'm glad to see it in some way coming back to the river and really being focused on uh, your priorities for funding. Mm -hmm. I think that's really well thought out. And I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Hi, I, Hi, I, I'm Di Hi, I'm Diana Parsons. I'm the town administrator in Coleraine. So I just wanted to pop on and say hello. And, oh, great. Nice um, to meet you. Just in Nice to meet you. Just in introduce myself. Obviously, Coleraine is aligned with those uh, goals as well that, uh, you know, Eric's speaking of. So, uh, Bill, I don't know if that's Bill Dornbush, but he was the one who had sent me the uh, link. And um, I know he was sort of mentioning that as being an objective of the town at some point. So, and I was with the town back when I started my career. I, I was with the town in uh, 2002. 2006. So had some experience back with the original assets bill um, when that money was coming through. And so, um, yeah, so great to be back and just want to um, be of any help I can to projects. And we'll, we'll see if we could partner up with folks and, um, you know, we'll see what works Excellent. for the town as well. So thank you. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks so so much for joining. Um, I think I talked to your pre predecessor maybe a year or so ago, um, about this funding opportunity, but um, I'm glad you could join um, and nice to meet you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Hey, um, this is Liam. I work at Franklin Land Trust. I'm a land conservation specialist there. I was wondering, is the money only spendable in coal rain or is it within the watershed of the North River as a whole? It's only and it's limited to coal rain. Um, the um, the kind of geographic focus area was laid out in the um, the consent judgment, so we're kind of tied to um, projects within the north the Deerfield or North River subwatershed and coal rain. Okay, understood. And for land acquisition projects, not that I have anything lined up, but in case something magically happens. Um, would it be fee interest only or conservation restriction interest and kind of what costs would be covered in um, terms of acquisition? Be, it could be either. Um, I think um, in the past, we, I, I'd have to double check. Um, I, I think we cover pretty much any costs associated um, with a, a land acquisition or, you know, conservation restriction, um, something like that. But um, I can, I could double check on that and get back to you. I haven't, actually been at NRD long enough to have been involved in the land acquisition project. So, um, but I think, I think all costs are, are eligible um, and, you know, land acquisition or conservation restriction, whatever um, would, would fall, would potentially fall under this grant opportunity. Okay. And there's 225,000 total available. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Well, I don't have anything lined up and it does sound like other people have real projects to apply for. So I don't want to make something up and then eat up funding. So okay. I'll probably not apply, but just wanted to kind of hear about the opportunity and yeah. um, thank you for the presentation. Oh, no, that's great. Thank you.
Anyone else? Okay, um, well, I'll, like I said, I'll be posting this presentation and the PowerPoint on our website. Um, I'm available to talk on email or phone, you know, about projects, you know, up until about October 1st. Um, so feel free to reach out anytime. Um, otherwise, I'll send you kind of the, the grant announcement when it's posted, anticipated to be in the very beginning of October. Um, and if that changes drastically for some reason, I'll, I'll let you know that as well. Um, but if there aren't any more questions, um, I'll let you get back to your day. And thanks, thanks so much for listening to the presentation and um, bringing some some good questions. Um, so really appreciate it, and look forward to hopefully working with some or all of you um, moving forward. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.